In this screencast, we'll do an analysis of BuildMax Heap that was introduced in the previous screencast. So what about the correctness of this algorithm? Well, we can use a loop invariant that at each iteration of the for loop nodes i plus 1, i plus 2 on up to n are roots of max heaps. So to prove the correctness by this loop invariant, we have to prove that it's true at initialization, that it's maintained, and it's true at termination, and that this leads to a useful property. So initialization. Well, the initialization is true because of this fact up here that I referenced previously. That's why I left it on there. That the nodes starting from n over 2 plus 1, n over 2 plus 2, up to n, are already uh, are leaves of the tree, and therefore the leaves of course are trivial max heaps and so since we're starting at n over 2 uh, all these other ones have already been taken care of so when i is equal to n over 2 i plus 1 i plus 2 corresponds to these things okay so now let's go to maintenance and this is based on the correctness of the max heapify subprocedure. Uh, we just have to show that the assumption of max heapify is met, which is that the children of the node indexed i are, are heaps. But because of the fact that we're working our way from the first non leaf node across the levels like this, we will never encounter a node until we've encountered the nodes that are its children. So you can write that out more formally, but you can see that every time we call max heap, on an i and we decrement it that the children of that node will already have been made into heaps and we know that max heap is correct. Okay finally the termination and here the loop terminates when i equals zero. So by the loop invariant that we've shown that is initialized and maintained everything from i equals one on up is the root of a max heap including the node indexed by 1, which is, of course, the root of the tree. Therefore, the whole thing is a max heap. Well, let's look even closer and do a little analysis. Our approach here will be to prove an easy bound, and then we'll tighten it up. So the easy proof is to note that this thing here is called about n over 2 times, because we skip all the leaves of the tree, so it's called that many times, and it costs log n to do it. So we get an overall bound of n log n, which is kind of like sorting. However, this is kind of a loose bound because only the root node and those near it are at that height of log n, this cost here. Many of the nodes are close to the leaves, and we don't even process half of them. So it seems like it would be possible to get a tighter bound. Let's take a look at how to do that. So let's recall two facts that we brought up in the first screencast on this topic. First of all, there are no more than n over 2 to the h plus 1 ceiling nodes of height h. And also, the heap is floor of log n i. So if max heapify is called on a node of height h, that's order of h. Remember, that's where the log n comes from. So we need to sum the cost of max heapify times the number of nodes at each h for all the relevant h. So let's write the expression. I'm going to start at height 0 up to log n high. And so for at each height, I'm going to now insert this expression here, the number of nodes at that height times the cost to process each of those, which is big O of h. Now, we can simplify this as follows. This is going to be a number of steps. First, I'm going to wrap the big O around the whole thing. And while I'm doing so, I'm going to remove the ceiling because this doesn't affect the big O analysis. But notice in here we have a term which is nh over 2 to the h plus 1, this thing here. And we can rewrite that as n over 2 
times h over 2 to the h. So how did h plus 1 become h? Well, because we took one of those 2's out. 2 to the h plus 1 is 2 times 2 to the h, so it's still there. So now we've isolated n over 2 is a, a factor in here that does not involve the variable of the summation, so we can move that out of the summation. So now we can write the whole thing as follows. And also, since 1 half is just a constant factor, I'm not even going to write this as n over 2. I'm just going to write n, because that constant factor will just wash out. So that leaves us with the h over 2h, 2 to the h. So this shows some examples of how the big O notation, when used appropriately, lets you drop out terms that you don't know what to do with. And we're also going to do another move here. Since this is big O of analysis, uh, big o analysis we're saying that our function that we're interested in is less than or equal to this. So this equality statement will still be true. This is really set membership. It will still be true if we replace this log n with infinity. Because certainly if we keep adding more terms, and we know that these terms are going to be positive, uh, that just makes this bigger. So it's still, it's still going to be an upper bound on the function that, you know, the f that this g function is bounding. So that simplification lets us apply this other formula I'm going to show here, which is um, A8 from the textbook, which is as follows. So another rewrite is needed here to match this formula. We can rewrite h over 2 to the h is equal to h times 1 to the h over 2 to the h. But that can be written as h times 1 half to the h. So this means that in this formula up here, x will be 1 half. And of course, uh, k will be h. When we apply the formula that way, we're going to get this. So x is 1 half over 1 minus 1 half squared, which is 1 half squared. So 1 half over 1 quarter, this whole thing can be erased because this is equal to 2. Oh, and we have an n there. So n, this thing we've just transformed, which is big O of 2n, which is big O of n. So that is the improved tighter bound on build max heap. It's no longer big O of n log n. Well, it is big O of n log n, but we know that an even better bound is it's going to be big O of n uh, to build a max heap, which is better than sorting. That's interesting because sorting, you have to have everything in exactly the same order. A heap is a partial order. Each parent is only bigger than its children, but we don't care about all the other children in the tree. So when you're making a partial order, you have to do less work. So it's big O of n rather than n squared. So that concludes our poking around with heap building. Pretty hot, thick stuff, I'll tell you. And next we're going to go on to some applications.